Teresa from Teresa's Spot for Art. Welcome to the Tim Burton Halloween DIY collaboration. I want to thank my host, Indy Annie Jones, for um, coordinating this for all us creatives. And we are painting um, Starry Nightmare Before Christmas. So let me turn you guys around and we will get started. There we go. I have my sketch out. I have my palette out. I'm using, I guess, what could be considered um, Halloween colors. Purple, blue, yellow, orange, some black, some white. And we are going to get started. I have out um, about a half inch wide flat brush. It's about the size of my finger. I'm gonna load it with some white paint here. I'm gonna put out some fresh white. I like to apply a little bit of pressure to my brush so my fibers flare out and my brush gets nice and filled with paint or loaded with paint. And the first thing I'm going to come in here and do is paint in our big moon. I can go right over um, my sketch because either I will be able to see my pencil lines or I can just redraw them. So I'm not really going to worry about that. I tried to go a little darker. I didn't use Sharpie. Sometimes I use Sharpie if there's something that I'm going to paint over in black. But I didn't use Sharpie because I want these silhouettes um, to be very detailed and thin. So I was afraid if I did it with a Sharpie, it would be too thick. So I'm just coming in here, I'm doing the base coat. Okay. Then I'm gonna put a corner over here in this golden yellow paint. And I'm gonna start blending in a little bit of gold ring to our bow moon. Pick up a little bit more white and blend that in really nice. The best way to blend paint is wet on wet. You want all your paint to be wet, what's on your surface and what's on your brush, and that's how you will get the best blend. And when I'm blending, I work my way into where I painted and then back down. Into where I painted and then back down. You don't want harsh lines, although sometimes it happens. Okay, and I'm going to wash my brush. I'm let that dry a little bit. I tend to move around when I paint. Um, this way, while one section is drying, I can be working on another section. I also like to paint on a Lazy Susie, so I can turn my canvas any which way I need to, and I'm gonna st start a painting in this other section. Now this top section, when I do it in here, I'm gonna mix purple and blue. So sometimes I'm gonna go pick up some purple, sometimes I'm gonna pick up some blue, and I'm gonna blend it in here on top. When I wanna get around my elements, I hold my brush up on the chisel edge and work my way around. And we're just gonna keep filling in this section. You guys excited about the new Beetlejuice movie? Oddly enough, I have a weird story about Beetlejuice way back when, before my husband and I knew that we were going to be husband and wife, we went out on a date with two other couples and we were with other people at the time and went to see Beetlejuice and everyone fell asleep in the movie except him and I. Isn't that weird? And then almost 30 years later, after remaining friends, we ended up getting married. How weird is that? Okay, I'm just filling in this section. If you want a tracer for this, hit me up. I can send it to you. Message me or drop it in the comments in here and I would be happy to send you the tracer. All right, let's get a little bit more purple in here. I was concentrating too much on the blue 
and my story. Okay. An important thing about this is you want to make sure that your yellow up here is completely dry and mine is or you're going to end up with green. It's probably one of the fewer things I remember from elementary school art that blue and yellow make green. And I'm just going to keep painting in this section, picking up purple and blue and filling it in. We want all our brush strokes to be, well in this case, if it goes along with the design, horizontal. But right now I'm painting them vertically because I have my canvas on a tilt. But you do want all your brush strokes to go in one direction. I'm even going to paint the edges. But for now, I'm just going to paint all the edges while I have the colors on my brush. I'm going to wrap the canvas with the colors that I used on the front to the side. So as I change colors, I'm going to change the edge of my canvas too. Let me come in here a little closer. I don't usually gesso my canvases beforehand and prep them and then sometimes they have the weave is kind of big and they tend to have some air pockets so as you're painting along you think you painted a certain spot and then you go back and you realize that the air pockets popped and there's no longer paint in that spot okay so got that section done and I am going to wash my brush paintings work out and when I paint, I paint from the bottom up. So I paint in layers, the back layer, and the next layer, and the next layer, and you work your way up. With acrylic paint, it's good that way because while certain sections are drying, you can keep painting. However, it's also good because if you make a mistake, you can go back and fix it. As you work your way up, you're fixing or enhancing some of the strokes or maybe some things you didn't like as much. I will say this, don't get caught up when you're doing the background about on things you don't like, because so much more goes into the painting. If you're caught up on something in your background that you didn't like, it's really not gonna matter by the time you get to the rest of the painting because when your painting's finished and you add all the details, nobody's even gonna see that. I'm picking up a little bit of black and adding it to my blue, because I'm gonna keep in the blue family, but I want this section in here to be a little darker blue. Not really black, but just a darker, deeper blue. So I added a tiny bit of black to my paint, and I'm gonna fill in this section here now. painting in this section, picking up purple and blue and filling it in. We want all our brush strokes to be, well in this case, if it goes along with the design, horizontal. But right now I'm painting them vertically because I have my canvas on a tilt. But you do want all your brush strokes to go in one direction. I'm even going to paint the edges. probably going to end up putting a really fancy edge um, on this painting because it is Tim Burton and Beetlejuice after all um, but we will get to that but for now I'm just going to paint all the edges while I have the 
colors on my brush. I'm gonna wrap the canvas with the colors that I used on the front to the side. So as I change colors, I'm gonna change the edge of my canvas too. Let me come in here a little closer. I don't usually gesso my canvases beforehand and prep them. And then sometimes they have, the weave is kind of big and they tend to have some air pockets. So as you're painting along, you think you painted a certain spot and then you go back and you realize that the air pockets popped and there's no longer paint in that spot. Okay, so got that section done and I am going to wash my brush. Paintings work out and when I paint. I paint from the bottom up. So I paint in layers, the back layer, and the next layer, and the next layer, and you work your way up. With acrylic paint, it's good that way because while certain sections are drying, you can keep painting. However, it's also good because if you make a mistake, you can go back and fix it. As you work your way up, you're fixing or enhancing some of the strokes or maybe some things you didn't like as much. I will say this, don't get caught up when you're doing the background about on things you don't like because so much more goes into the painting. If you're caught up on something in your background that you didn't like, it's really not gonna matter by the time you get to the rest of the painting because when your painting's finished and you add all the details, nobody's even gonna see that. Okay. I'm picking up a little bit of black and adding it to my blue because I'm going to keep in the blue family, but I want this section in here to be a little darker blue. Not really black, but just a darker, deeper blue. So I added a tiny bit of black to my paint and I'm going to fill in this section here now. sections I want to do are the yellow ones. So I'm going to load my brush up with some yellow. I'm going to pick up a tiny little bit of white on my brush because yellow and this bright yellow tends to be a little translucent. So every time I pick up the yellow I'm going to pick up some white and that will help me get really nice coverage but it'll keep my yellow nice and bright. is just the base coat we're color blocking in all the sections this time with my yellow I picked up a little bit of um, this deep ochre color because I think I like it better for this Halloween stuff and I'm going to go back and I'm going to go over my first yellow as well. Just a little bit. I just want to deepen it up a little bit. So I'm making that one deeper and then this one a little bit lighter.
I'm going to pick up this deep orange. This is spiced pumpkin. And I'm going to start doing in my orange sections here. Okay, fix this, and then I'm going to grab my liner brush so I can get in here. It's always nice to be able to have your tools do the job for you. Let all that dry and I'm going to start working on some of the black. Give my brush a nice rinse and dry it off. Go to my black and start filling in my silhouette. Oops. I love doing paintings that have really cool backgrounds, interesting backgrounds, and then just have a fun silhouette on them. They're easy. They're great for beginners. You can like, get any shape or design. And I don't mean you know to steal other people's artwork, but you can get a simple shape simple design, even like flowers or a mermaid or whatever, and paint a really fun and interesting background. And then just throw a silhouette on it and you have a beautiful piece of art. will say this if you're trying to make this guy perfect a lot of times when we're trying to make objects perfect and we have a left and a right and a left and a right we'll go back and forth back and forth of trying to make it even Steven and next thing you know our element is way too big than our project so sometimes you just have to be like okay even enough even Steven good enough before you know it, you'll be going 
oh, I gotta fix the right. Oh no, now I have to fix the left. Now I have to fix the right. And then we will end up with something that you didn't picture. So it's art, it can't be wrong, it's not going to be perfect, and sometimes we just have to let it go. And just carefully adding in the black paint here and painting in some of these tombstones. I can see my pencil lines underneath, but it's not like I made them so detailed that I couldn't really just paint them on here if I didn't have my pencil lines. And let's finish painting these in. And this gives time for the rest of my project to dry. I'm going to go into the fun part. I'm gonna take some of this white on my brush. It's got a little bit of yellow in it, but that's okay. And I'm gonna draw these big stars. Now these are quite random. They can be different sizes as big or as small as you want them to be. This one's gonna go up the page a little bit. I'm gonna put one in here. I think I'll even put one off the page up here. And I'm just gonna go back and I'm just gonna add a little bit of yellow to them now. Just want them to pop a little bit not too much I'm just dipping the corner of my brush in the yellow and coming back in here and brightening them up just a tiny bit okay maybe we'll put one more over here just make sure that your background is completely dry when you do this Okay, now I'm going to turn my um, painting on the side, and I'm going to start with the yellow. Now I'm going to mix a bunch. I'm going to mix a bunch of yellow and white together. I'm going to make this pale yellow. because I want to be able to see that it's yellow and not translucent. I'm gonna take my brush on the chisel edge and I'm gonna make these dashes around. You know what I think I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna switch brushes. So I have a little bit of some light yellow paint here. I mixed up my bright yellow with my white. I'm getting my liner brush. I'm twirling it between my thumb and my forefinger to make a nice point. And I'm gonna start putting these dashes in a circular motion around these stars or these circles that I drew. I'm gonna do probably two rows in the circle. I'll mix more paint as I need it. And I'm just gonna keep going around. You want some movement. And I'm going to come to all of them, starting with the yellow. I don't want this one to go down into the orange. I'm going to keep it up here in the blue and the yellow. And I'm going to do at least 
two layers or two circles around them all. Just to start. Okay. I'm going to keep mixing the yellow and the white as I go. And now I'm going to start in here. And I'm just going to start dabbing in following my shapes and going in to my whole design. We want them to have a little bit of curve to them. I'm going to come back in here because there's room in this section for two. Maybe even be three where it gets a little bit wider. I pick up paint about every four or five strokes, but that depends on your brush. And I'm going to fill these in in section by section. And we have other colors to add to. because that's when you're making all the direction changes you're laying it out you want to create all the movement but once you get the first section down the first color down it gets a lot easier after that because then you're just following the same pattern that you created with that first section. So we're going to be adding some purple to this and some orange and some white, but it goes a lot quicker because the yellow is my focal point. And now is the time that I'm establishing the pattern. Pick up some more white. So we have that all done up in there. I'm going to keep going with my yellow while I have it on my brush. And we're going to start doing up in here into the orange section. We're not going to do yellow in the yellow section, but we are going to be using the same colors that we're using for this whole project. and adding them to the opposite backgrounds. that your dashes, your lines, your design, whatever you want to call it, is basically the same size, but really, it's not going to matter that much. But don't worry. Because we have a lot of other colors to add. If some of your yellow lines 
are dark, some of them are light. It's just going to enhance your design. Okay, I'm not even gonna wash my brush. I'm just gonna go right into the orange. You can wash your brush if you want, it doesn't really matter. I'm twirling it in here between my thumb and my forefinger. I like to have a nice point on my liner brush. And now I'm gonna start the same thing with orange, but now in the yellow sections. And this is what I mean about using the same palette, but just opposite. the subscribe button to my YouTube channel please do you'll be notified every time I upload a new video I have dozens of step-by-step -step video tutorials on my YouTube channel some of them come with a supply list and a tracer but if you have any questions about any colors, feel free to contact me. Or if you want a tracer, feel free to reach out. And if I have a tracer, I will send it to you. I am a big proponent of using the tools that you have. I will often use a tracer or a stencil to start my projects. And I'm okay with that. I don't draw. Drawing and painting are two very different talents. And so if I can grab a tracer or a stencil to start my artwork, I'm totally all for it. Sometimes we only have maybe 15 or 20 minutes for ourselves. And if I can create something by starting out with a shortcut like a tracer or a stencil, I will. So now I'm going to continue on with some orange. Sometimes they overlap. Sometimes they fill in. It's not really that big a deal. You just want to follow the same pattern. And make sure that you don't cover up all the blue or your background color, whatever that is. Sometimes when doing these abstract paintings, you have to step away a little bit. A good trick is to take a picture on your phone, yep, and then look at the picture and you can see maybe where your design might have missed, where you might need to add to it. It's a really good way to get perspective on your project. It even helps when I look up here into the camera. I can see much better where I may have missed or something's a little bit off in my design. 
It's very hard to judge your artwork when you're right on top of it. I tell my painters at my in-person events, it's not a placemat. You shouldn't be that close to your art. start adding in blue to my yellow section where I already did my orange. fresh white I'm gonna add a little bit of highlight to my cemetery scene down here Too much, a little bit. I don't want it to be too solid. Just highlighting the bottom a little bit. And then up in here too, but just a little bit. Do what we have all been waiting for. Fix my liner brush. And start filling in my silhouette. turning my canvas as I go along. I want to be very careful about this part. I mean, I could fix it if I wanted to or had to, but it's easier to fix light colors than black. And so I will be 
quite careful as I paint these guys in here. some white I'm going to go in and I'm just going to start adding in some white the white is really going to pop I don't want it to be too much or too heavy or take away from the rest of my project but we do need a little bit of white highlight just like we did on our black silhouettes on the bottom. time I'm going around the stars again all the other colors went around now I'm actually following the shapes because I want them to really pop <laughs> take my blue. I'm going to take my liner brush and I'm going to outline my shapes. If you can't do it in one line, do it in little sections. Okay, do about an inch at a time. Sometimes we have to do it like that anyway because our brush starts to run out of paint. You could do this with black if you wanted. I like to do it with the blue. I feel like the black would be too much but you can do you. Okay, and I'm gonna leave the moon. I like, I like how it's highlighted here and that's fine with it there. I'm gonna take my brush. I'm gonna do a little bit of design 
around the outside. So I'm going to start in the middle and then I'm just going to split each side. I'm going to go in the ends. In between. This way you can eyeball it, but it doesn't have to be perfect. You're not using a ruler. You just, every time you put one in the middle, and then in the middle, and then in the middle, and then in the middle. Go around here again. Start with one end, two ends, put this one in the middle, and then middle, middle, and every time you're putting a line, and then let me get my white, end, end, and then middle. I'm starting to get some gray because my black was wet. I like doing these fun edges. Sometimes I do them in multicolors. I do them with whatever colors I have left over. This time I'm just doing it in the black and white because it's appropriate for Beetlejuice. And there we go. There is my Tim Burton collaboration DIY for Halloween in honor of Beetlejuice 2 coming out. And I would like to again thank Indiana Jones for um, coordinating this YouTube collaboration. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to watch the rest of the videos. Thanks everyone.